Welcome back to the channel. I'm Nisha, and today I have a very special guest. Actually, she's my very first guest. Um, emerging author of her new memoir, The Presumption of Innocence, Rod K. Rod, how are you doing today? I'm all right. I'm all right. Thank you. I'm glad to hear you are doing good. I'm um, glad to have you on the show today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Um, Rod, today you're going to be talking about your new memoir, uh, the presumption of innocence. Uh, in this book, you know, I had so many different emotions when reading this book. Like sometimes I was sad, uh, angry. Um, also in the book, you talk about or you touch on domestic violence. Yeah, that was a situation that I, I, I went through. And you also touch on, uh, you talk about how the justice system failed you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but before we, you know, even talk about that, my first question to you is, how did you even come up with the title, The Presumption of Innocence? How, where did that come from? It was actually uh, my editor and publisher. She came up with the title of the book, uh, Miss Keita Hood of White Elephant uh, Publishing um, Company, which is hers. Mm -hmm. uh, she, uh, put some time and energy of her own into helping me to get this project started and off the ground, which I, I really appreciate. That's pretty cool. Um, what inspired you to start writing poetry, Ra? And um, is there anyone who influenced you as a poet and writer? I started writing poetry when I was a teenager because I wanted to engage in a, a kind of language that's not an everyday conversation. So mm -hmm. that's how I started writing poetry. And as far as anyone who influences me, uh, it would, um, it's Arthur, uh, Mama Toni Morrison. Yeah, she was a, a master at what she did. So she definitely is my, my top enforcer. And not my only one, but my number one. Yeah, I mean, in the book, you know, not only do you talk about, like I said before, the domestic violence and how the justice system failed you, but you also have like some dope poems in there. Like <laughs> your poems are, they are <laughs> immaculate. Thank you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but uh, when reading your book, uh, I want to know how in the world did you, you know, get third degree felony? I mean, you never had any prior, so that doesn't make any sense to me. Could you, could you please, you know, share with the viewers how you know this came about? Like your background. Could you tell me your background before all of this craziness happened? Like what led, what led to the, you know, arrest? I, mean, I didn't have a background. I didn't have um, anything. I had a clean slate. I was born and raised in Kansas City, Kansas. I actually worked for the Sheriff's Department for a brief period of time when I was younger. And then I switched over to the healthcare field and I was maintaining my license uh -huh. as a nurse's aide um, when my daughters and I moved to Texas. Oh, okay. And that's what I was doing. Um, had never been in trouble with the law before. Never. Yeah, so yeah, Texas pretty much railroaded me is what they did. Um, the first time I got into a legal situation. Rod, can you take me back to the day you were being handcuffed, right? And your daughters were walking up to the scene. What were you feeling in that moment? Absolute distress. <laughs> Absolute distress. Yeah. 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 I can only imagine at the time, what they were feeling coming home from school. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm not in the kitchen, you know, preparing a dinner. I'm, I'm in the parking lot. Right. Getting arrested. <laughs> also, too, in the book, you talk about how, you know, when you were being arrested, how there was a black cop and there was a white cop. And the black cop seemed to be, like, civil with you. But the white cop, he act as if, like, he didn't have any sympathy or or anything for you. You talk about how, you know, there was a difference in, in the way you were treated. He treated me, um, he called me a criminal when they uh, came on the scene uh, after I was uh, 
assaulted, physically assaulted, um, but still ended up being the one going to jail because yeah. uh, it was an old lady. That put old, her paws on old, you. She put her paws on She put her paws on me. Yeah. So, um, guys, the only reason why Rob went to jail was because the elderly lady, she, um, it was her age? Did they say it was because of her age? I yes. Like, it didn't make any sense. Yes. She she was old enough to get away with smacking me. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. And, and when I reacted to her smacking me, I went to jail. I got a third degree felony with no priors. Yeah. In oh, Texas. Unfortunately. Yeah. You know, that was so unfortunate. But, you know, but you regret doing that, you know. I mean, you would want it to go. <laughs> <laughs> if if I could go back, which I can't, but <laughs> I mean, if I, if I, I could, mean, you, if you could, and I can't speak for you, I, I just it's, I would have got my ass off the stairs. <laughs> like you know, I wouldn't even been on the stairs in the first place. I was I would stay my ass inside. That's what I would have did. Just would have stayed my ass inside that day. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, you've been through so much. How did you get through it? How did you get through all this? I'm still going through it. As is detailed in my memoir, I'm still going through it. It's not over. It's a type of righteous indignation. Yeah. As is titled in one of the uh, prose that I wrote in the book is, is that. And I just, I just refused to let it go down the way it went down. Yeah. I went through a, a domestic violence situation. Yeah. I got away from a man that was a narcissistic sociopath. Mm -hmm. um, I jumped, I jumped right out the frying pan. Yeah. I jumped out of the frying pan right into the fire, like the old heads say, mm -hmm. and you know, into a worse situation. And. The, the two situations of domestic violence and the, the accusation yeah. being wrongfully accused yeah. and then uh, grossly mishandled mm -hmm. um, by the state of Texas are tied to each other. Yeah. And I just, no, mm -hmm. no. All right. So, you know, writing is a talent, right? Uh, but it has its it has its fair share of obstacles, as we all know. Uh, what difficulties did you experience um, when writing this book, if any, and how did you overcome them? The most difficult thing mm -hmm. writing it was reliving um, the. Uh, abuse that I endured yeah. and escaped from. Mm -hmm. That was the most challenging thing. That was, yeah, that was, it was triggering. Yeah. Doing that all over again. But I got it out. Mm -hmm. I need my story to be told. I don't need the guy who abused me to get away with being called the victim. Uh, because he's not. I was very adamant about telling the truth. Yeah. Also, too, by you uh, telling your story, this will help a lot of people. I hope so. It will. A lot of people, um, you know. I hope it does. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not the only one being railroaded by the injustice system. I'm not the only one that uh, some court somewhere is trying to make a slave out of. Um, it's a lot of people out there fighting that. Yeah. A lot of innocent people put in terrible situations that involve the legal system and, you know, are too uh, cash-strapped yeah. to pay for their freedom and their rights. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's just the surface part of it. It goes a lot deeper than that. Yeah. Um. Ron, do you feel like you got your life back? I'm on the road to correcting the wrongs that was done to me. So 
I'm in the process. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, with all this, you know, what happened and stuff, it's going to take some time, which we know it's going to take some time to get your life back. But that's what you're working on right now. Um, What advice would you give someone going through the same situation that you did in dealing with the legal system? You need someone innocent dealing with being accused of, you know, charges that they don't deserve. Absolutely. Just don't cave in. That's what I I would say. The system is set up for us to cave in and for us to give up, for us to lose hope and to lose our spirit. Mm. Um, don't do it. Rob, what do you want your readers to take away from your book? Well, You'll be helping a domestic abuse survivor with every purchase of my book. Um, you'll be helping my daughters be supporting a black business yeah. as well. Um, the publisher and editor of the book. Help me fight back. Help me fight back. There are people out there who are going to be watching this video who know the situation, who know what happened um, to me, who are aware, as I'm making others aware of it. So that's what I want my readers to take back from it. That um, this is a mission. It's more than a public a publication. It's more than a memoir. This is a mission. That's what I want you guys to take from it. Well, I mean, that's the truth. That's that's what it is. You just kept it real. <laughs> you just kept it one hundred. So. But Rob, uh, in the beginning, you know how I talked about like the feelings that the emotions that I had when reading the book and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, there there's also a side that I really enjoyed, which is which are your poems. Uh, I was just wondering if you could like just share one of them with the viewers out there. Something that you wrote. She writes her own poems. Or, they're super sure. dope. Uh, just from the book. The yeah, I can do that. The presumption of innocence. <laughs> okay. Um, this is Remember. One of the poems called Remember. Um, Psalm 82 6. I said, You are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. The poem is, sometimes you'll find yourself in a place where the only way you can see the stars is to close your eyes. Create your world while you're at it. Find God in your reflection. Remember that your breath and skin are holy. You're a living temple no matter where you are. Let no one tear you down. Pray inwardly, knowing that both listener and answer reside there. This doesn't mean you're perfect, but that you have the power to be better. So when you find yourself in a place where the only way you can feel the sun's warmth is to radiate, be blinded. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good. Oh, yeah. You know, I've been a fan for years, for years of your poems. Like, really. Thank you. I appreciate it. Really. That was deep. Okay. Um, Ross's book is now on Amazon. It's out now on Amazon. And uh, I'll be leaving all of her information in the description box below. Uh, Rod, can you tell the viewers how to, you know, they can connect with you on all your platforms? Well, um, my author's page on Facebook is A Presumption of Innocence by Rod K. Um, I'm on Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Ra Sis Boom Ba, R A S I S. B O O M B A H on Instagram. And your book is also on Kindle? Yeah, it's a um, paperback and in Kindle version on Amazon for right now. I got my book. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, go go ahead and support Rob, guys. 
uh, this book is uh, it's actually a great read. So thank you. Yeah, it's a great read for real. So um, yeah, go pick that up. Uh, connect with Ra. Ask her a couple of questions. If you got any questions, uh, you know where to find her. Uh, Ra, thank you for coming to the show. Thank you. Uh, your awesome guest. Uh, that's it. This is Rod K. I'm Nisha Vibes, and we're out. Thanks for watching.